afternoon, everyone. Sorry that we're starting late today. We had some unfinished business that we had to handle today, and then we had a little service call that we needed to talk about, but we are here and ready to go. And with that, Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Brown, Ms. Herbert, Dr. Bustles. Here. Herbert. Here. Thank you. Mr. Brennan. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Present. Mayor Rickman. Here. Thank and you. for the public's note, Dr. Bustles and uh, Ms. Herbert are on the line. Um, they're remoting in today for various reasons, but they are here with us. Um, with that, <laughs> everybody stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Ed, you want to yes. say a word of invocation before we start, please? In the midst of all that we do in this city of ours, the greatness of the city sort of hinges itself on the notion that we didn't do it individually by ourselves. The greatness of this city sort of singles out that clear parameter that if it was not me, it's us. So just for a few moments, as we embrace all of the things that are happening in our city, I want you to bow for just a moment in silence. And bow, bowing in silence, remembering the families that have experienced loss, the 14-year-old young man who was killed, his family, certainly solicit your prayers and your support. Mrs. Elise Martin, 108 years old, a powerful business woman here in the city died. Mrs. Hattie Donalds, and all of the other families that are experiencing loss. We ask silently now that we remember them and this great city of ours. Amen. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. At this point, we would ask for any public input related to items on the agenda as outlined. Oh, hey, how are you, Ms. Wiley? Well, I don't want to do the public thing because I have other things I need to do because last time I got held back for a long time. But I just want to say thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Teresa, City Council, I didn't get finished what I had to say last time. Thank you for helping us. I want to, I'm not going to only fuss, but I give you honor for what you do. You know, I thank you for helping my neighborhood. I even got one of my neighbors, he would never come out here. Mr. Freeman, stand up. Because he was, he was hurt. She, she drugged you then. No, she, he, uh, <laughs> He, he was discouraged. It's a lot of them, they discouraged, but not, no, no more, no more at all. And when you have a city councilman that you can call every day, sometimes he don't answer, but you do call me back yeah. every day, yeah. And he helps us. That's who you need for your communities. And I wish every community would come out like I do. I'm devoted. I see my house going back up, and that's, thank you, Lord. Yes. I see my house going back up, seven and a half years. I wanna, I'm gonna tell the world, and I thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. McDowell, you my rock, 
on the other side of my husband. <laughs> I, you know, I'm serious, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. My yeah. husband has went. I, I, I fight for him because he can't speak for himself. But I want to thank you because the other day when I took him there Saturday, I mean Friday, he just cried in the car. He really did. And I thank you. I thank the whole city council. When I can get seven votes, you got my vote. You really do. And my fusses. And I don't fuss because I fuss. I fuss because I think you don't hear me. And I'm going to be here. I don't care what neighborhood. I have to stand by myself because the man upstairs helping me. But anything y'all want me to do, pass out papers, anything, I'm here. You just keep doing what you're doing. Yes, yes. So give me something to do. I do it faithfully. in the loop, making yeah. sure that we're involved. I, I, I love when I get a phone call from you because most of the time it's about something in the neighborhood and yes. you care about where you live, and that is worth gold. Yeah, and so another thank thing, you, I, Wiley. I want to thank, uh, thank you, too. I need my fire people to have a decent place. I went out there and had breakfast. I was just a part with our fire department right there by, by the house. It's in bad shape, very bad shape. The building is really bad. You can collect the check from Chief Jenkins on the way out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Ms. Wiley. The mayor, we have Tracy here signed up to speak on item 13. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing, Miss Tracy? Doing good. So good to see everybody. We had not talked in so long. I feel like I haven't seen you forever. How you doing? <laughs> we actually spoke this morning. Thank you for responding to my call and Dr. Bussels and Councilwoman, Councilwoman Herbert. So I have spoken to the people I need to speak to. Uh, David Hatcher has also responded to my email. However, I still need to the concern that with item number 13, I was so shocked and dismayed that we were not the Greenville community on that list for blight uh, demolitions. And we have properties that are over 15 years of blightness. And um, I just, I was just alarmed to sadness at one o'clock this morning when I went and saw. Right I did. I did. And so, yes, I have spoken to the people I need to speak to. We are still not happy at the process. We know it is a process. We know it's not a 15-year process or more than a nine-year process, but there is a process. I, I'm going to tell you, like I told you on the phone, right yes. in front of the God in this camera, we got you covered. Thank you. When we can get there legally, we got there. You don't worry about the money. We got it covered. Okay. Well, I'm um, I say that on behalf of the seven people in the city. Yes, and also, Mr. Hatcher has confirmed he was going to use his own money to uh, to take care of that demo. No, I'm teasing. He didn't say that. But he did. He knows the property. I won't state it. He knows our, concern, our concerns. And I thank you for listening. I just have to represent our community to say we were so unhappy that we weren't on that list. But we know it's to come. And we understand the process. Thank you. You're on a whole bunch of other lists for other things. So re remember the bright side, not just the bad. And while you're here, go ahead and do a little P PSA for your event on Saturday. Oh, I can do that? You go ahead while oh, you're so here. Yes, Let I would know. love. Oh, thank you. I would love for everyone to come out to our event at the North Minister Presbyterian Church from 10 to 3. We are doing the first annual Pre-Father's Day barbecue giveaway prostate cancer awareness event and so it's near and dear to my heart that cause and i just think we need to have a regular normal conversation all the time about what's your psa it is killing african-american men and it is the only treatable and curable cancer so 10 to 3 greenview community thank you so much all right, Mayor, the last individual signed up to speak is Holland Huffstetler to speak on item 21. Hi, um, I just wanted to speak before we got started about uh, the project we're doing at South Pickens, 335 South Pickens. I'm representing Lucas Properties, um, the new owner. Uh, I just wanted to let y'all know that we have been able to meet with the 
um, neighborhood association and they are no longer opposed to our plans and we got all their questions answered. Um, so if there is any other questions, I just want to make sure that we are able to get a vote on this tonight if possible. So thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Madam city manager or madam clerk, do we have anyone else? No, sir, not at this time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, council is asked to approve the April 18th, 2023 and May 2nd, 2023 council meeting minutes. Is there a motion? Second? Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussions, concerns, corrections? Hearing none, seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you read the roll, please? Mr. Brown? Ms. Herbert? Aye. Aye. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Paul? Aye. Mayor Rickman? Thank you. Thank you. Mayor and Council, we have reached that point in the year, one of the most important parts of the year where we approve our budget for the next fiscal year on time and, and balanced. And so with that, we will begin um, the discussion with a budget public hearing and also a presentation for our citizens to understand what the proposed budget includes and then we'll take each of the related ordinances associated with the proposed FY 2023-2024 budget one by one. I would ask Ms. Missy Kaufman, our budget program management and grants director to come forward to take us through the presentation. Of course, uh, CFO, Assistant City Manager Jeff Palin and I are here also to assist. Hey, Missy. You have three minutes, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a three minutes, maybe maybe it's much more. So um, thank you, Ms. Wilson, uh, Mayor and City Council, of course, our, our wonderful city staff and uh, the members of the public. We're glad, as Ms. Wilson said, um, honored to be able to present to you the city manager's proposed fiscal year 2023-2024 proposed budget. Um, let's see if we can slip through the slides. So we are going to uh, try to summarize um, a, a uh, $425 million budget in a few short, short slides. Of course, we're hitting high level and um, highlights uh, from each, each of our different funds. Uh, the city's budget, just like every other um, government entity, um, organizes uh, by, by fund um, as required. A fund is an accounting entry um, with self-balancing accounts that are segregated for the purposes of identifying activities and attaining certain objectives in accordance with specific regulations, restrictions, and limitations. So the city, of course, has a general fund, our enterprise funds are proprietary, which include our water and sewer, stormwater and parking fund, special revenues of hospitality, accommodations, liquor rebate permit, Liquor, liquor permit rebates, as well as um, the tourism development fee. Those are two new ones that we've included in the budget this year. And our capital improvement programs for water, wastewater, stormwater, parking, and uh, various general um, capital improvement projects that are funded with special revenue this year. As mentioned, the proposed budget is a uh, total of 425 million across all funds for the operating budget. Uh, general fund makes up 40% of that budget and water and sewer is now at 47%. Water and sewer now exceeds the, um, the general fund in terms of total budget. And the remaining balance, of course, are the other funds as mentioned. Also wanted to demonstrate and show to city council and to our public, um, if I can get through the power the pointer to work. I'm not sure what's happening. Someone can advance the slides for me. Well, I'll keep proceeding on until we're able to advance. The, um, the next slide that will come up is a, um, maybe you can have the magic touch. The next slide that's coming up will be the um, proposed budget by our different categories for the total budget. Um, this is demonstrating how our budget is laid out across the different uh, uh, major categories. Okay, all right, good, thank you. 
Um, the total personnel budget across all of our funds is 161 million. That's about 38 percent of our total budget. Um, government services is a service. So government services is a service industry. So of course that's going to rely on our city employees. They are the core of our city services. Rounding out another component of that, if I consolidated all of our um, debt service, our transfers, capital improvements, and our capital outlays or capital purchases, that's the other 28%. And I collapse those all together because those are all related to investments into our, into our city infrastructure. Our total capital improvement program for fiscal year 23-24 is $111 million, um, with that being water. Um, Drinking water CIP is at 28.5, wastewater is 64.5, stormwater is 13.1, parking is 1.9, and general CIP funded with special revenues is coming in at 3.8. We will co cover these, of course, a little bit more detail as we go through the budget. The framework for this budget, of course, is meeting, is the focus is meeting the objectives of city council um, outcome, objective, um, City Council strategic outcome priorities. And the city manager also um, establishes various framework in terms of as we're preparing the budget. Um, city Council establishes budget priorities in the form of policy decisions, budget guidelines, and recommendations um, by way of, of um, working with the city manager and the city staff. Um, this presents as a management and planning tool for us in terms of preparing a proposed budget for you today. This proposed budget meets these objectives. Um, in terms of the priorities for this coming fiscal year. In addition, we have identified, and this is not really easy to read, but we, we will have materials that, that is a little more legible for folks to be able to share in terms of highlighting certain functions and certain activities that is included in this budget that, that are aimed at um, meeting City Council's strategic outcome um, in their highlights. We also like to wrap up our budget in terms of uh, um, the city by the numbers, as we like to call this information. This just sort of rounds out what $425 million functions and operates with regards to our, our residents, our number of services, the number of uh, different assets that the city has. Moving forward through each of our different um, funds, the general fund budget is 170 million, 170.5. This is an increase of 5.7 or 3.5% over the current year. Of course, the budget was prepared with expectation of meeting of maintaining our existing services, and in some cases, some cases increasing those different uh, service levels, and of course, uh, programs aimed at meeting city council objectives. The general fund is our primary functioning, our primary fund of the, that supports um, most of our city services: police, fire, public works, our parks and recreation, um, municipal court, internal services, um, or uh, human resources, IT, city administration, um, of course, and then the. Um, strategic approach to balancing this budget was addressed through different revenue enhancements and opportunities in managing our cost. We'll focus a little bit now on the uh, overall um, general fund revenues, which is again is 170 million. Revenues of that 170 are 146.7 million, uh, just a slight increase of 3.4. Um, property taxes, licenses, and permits make up 63% of the total uh, revenue streams of the city. Uh, the property tax mill, there is no change in our property tax mills, and property tax millage is at 93.8%, which is about 18% of a total residential homeowner's property tax bill in the city of Columbia for Richland School District 1. 17.2, thank you. Uh, transfers in total at 23.8 million. That reflects use of um, 3 million in fund balance as well as 9 million that we uh, has it comes in as a revenue in in terms of our capital lease program. Um, we also are utilizing another two million in American Rescue Plan funds. And just sort of wrap up a little bit more about the millage. You can see a demonstration how the city's property tax mills reflects on total millage of a property tax. Uh, the blue line representing the city of Columbia's portion of the total property tax bill coming in at 17.2 percent as the mayor's as identified. Property taxes make up about 37% of the total general fund revenue. And just for another little uh, graphic, just demonstrating um, in terms of where um, city dollars come from in terms of uh, overall revenue streams. Moving on to general fund rate expenditures, uh, public safety make up the majority of the combined general fund budget coming in at 
48 percent. Um, Rounding that out again would be general governmental and then public works. The total operating budget for um, our departments is 152 million, which is an increase of about 2.7 percent. That just reflects the operating budgets. A few other highlights to point out um, in terms of the total general fund um, sections we have. Uh, I think I skipped the slide, yeah. Major drivers in developing the general fund, of course, are will be personnel, um, fuel, fleet repairs, and gone, along with in, um, inflation impacts on just our operating costs. The budget does, inflect, does reflect the inclusion of the public safety retention and recruitment efforts um, for both our sworn officers, as well as a marketing and promotion for attracting um, and, um, and re, uh, recruiting our sworn, sworn police and fire personnel, um, and then also um, focus on some alternative service delivery techniques and mechanisms in order to help address calls for service. We're also utilizing, of course, more technology as we improve service delivery across the city. Um, this does impact our budget by way of the cost for just um, um, reoccurring costs that, are, that is now in place for cloud-based solutions. Um, that does have an impact, of course, in terms of that trade-off. Um, that we receive in terms of the services that we do gain from efficiencies from use of technology. Expanding focus on beautification to improve maintenance of our entrance ways and main thoroughfares, of course, has been a big priority for city council in addressing our medians and making sure our city represents um, the capital. Uh, programming services in our parks, especially towards our seniors, um, is a highlight and focus of our parks and recreation department. Other priorities or focuses in the general fund um, is that, is that again, as mentioned, the total general fund budgets represent 146 million. Um, the, the other components of the budget outside of our operating departments, um, we do have a, an allocation for services that are provided to various Richland County functions to include the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center, that's for the uh, prisoner per diem as well as the Fifth Circuit Solicitor and of course the Public Defender. Our debt and capital lease, um, total um, our debt our capital but our budget for capital um, debt service is 3.6 million it's a slight reduction from the current year in terms of debt service schedule and then our payment for our capital lease is 6.1 and that does include the issuance of an additional lease for this coming fiscal year lease is a, it's a capital lease but it's a financing function it's not a traditional lease it's often thought of in terms of um, uh, capital lease for vehicles and so forth Expenditures, again, just another demonstration of where our dollars go or where your dollars go with regards to um, the general fund budget. The majority of that, again, is public safety. Moving on with our, our enterprise funds, uh, starting with water and sewer, the total water and sewer fund budget is 199, almost $200 million, with a capital improvement program of 93 million. The total projected budget, um, Revenues is 199, which is an increase of 16.9, almost 17 million, or 9% over the current year. It does reflect the inclusion of a 5% proposed rate adjustments for water and sewer rates. The, that 5% um, increase is projected to in, generate about 8.8 million in revenues, and those revenues are, of course, dedicated to the capital improvement program and other operating costs. The revenues, um, the other factors also attributed to the revenue growth is it related to um, customer growth and of course projected consumptions. Just for demonstration in terms of what that impact looks like on a, on a um, in-city water bill, um, current water portion of a bill is 23.83. That's based on the assumption of 5,984 5, gallons, um, which is a, which is a uh, typical um, residential bill for inside city or usage, and then of course the proposed would be $25.02. And then of course the um, wastewater portion on that same amount of consumption, um, inside city limits would be uh, $43.97 per month and would increase to $46.17 per month. Combining those two costs together, a monthly, a monthly um, existing bill would be of $67.80. Uh, would increase to $71.19 per month, so looking at about $3.39 per month on a 
typical use, average use of 800 cubic feet or 5,964 gallons of water. The total operating budget, of course, is also 199 million since we do have a balanced budget. Um, the um, increase for departments is 100, is, is the, the total budget for operating departments is 120 million. That's a net increase of 14.3 or 14% over the current year. Of course, those increases are attributed to operating costs associated with electricity at our, at our utility plants, our water, two water treatment plants and our wastewater plant, of course, chemical cost, as well as other non-capital um, related maintenance and ongoing um, services utilizing our contractors and of course, capital equipment purchases. Um, the largest portion of the operating department's budgets represents utilities. That would be most of, that would be the entire, um, our, our two water treatment plants, our wastewater plant, our, um, our maintenance crews and service crews and construction crews. Moving on with the remaining of the water and sewer fund, the debt service is 49.5 million. Of course, that debt service is based on the existing debt service schedule for the, um, purposes of financing our um, capital improvement program. Um, it does have an inc a slight increase of 1.1 million. It's less than 1% over the current year. Transfers out is 26.6 million. It's an increase of 3.5 or 15% over the current year. The majority of that increase is, is associated with the cash that is used to fund the capital improvement program that, trans that increased from 16 to 19 million. The other portion of that allocation is a um, indirect cost or the cost allocation for general fund of 4.7 million. Um, just as a snapshot is the uh, proposed uh, drinking water capital improvement program, which is 28.5 million, the majority of which that water, that um, budget is related to uh, projects for water quality. And then just visually you can see of course, our water and sewer system exceeds city limits, so we have a number of projects that are, are um, this is just a highlight of some of those projects included in the proposed um, fiscal year. More information, of course, is available on our website um, with a little more detail with regards to, um, might be something a little more visual that you can see um, than what's on the slides. The wastewater, proposed wastewater um, capital improvement program is 68.5 million with um, the majority of that project being related to capacity building um, and of course and also rehab um, in the um, wastewater programs. And again, just uh, visualizing where those projects are throughout the entire water and sewer system. Moving on to our stormwater proposed budget, the stormwater proposed budget operating budget is 18.2 million with a capital improvement program of 13.1 million. This is a slight increase of 2.1 or 13% over the current year. It does not include a rate increase for this coming year. The majority of this increase is uh, primarily attributed to the budget reflecting um, more accurately what, what collections for are looking like in terms of our, our stormwater system. Last year they were, uh, or the current year, they were um, probably a little underestimated in terms of where we were actually collection. So this is really based on the growth, is, the, the increase here is really based on the fact of where we are in terms of actual collections. Of course, that, um, the source of revenues for the stormwater fund are the stormwater fees. Expenditure-wise in the stormwater budget, the total, um, the operating budgets are 8.2 million. Um, the largest portion of the um, stormwater budget is a, is the transfer to the of cash to the stormwater um, improvement program? Um, debt services budget 2.4 million, and then the operating departments, like I mentioned, is 8.2 of that total budget. With the uh, departments' budgets that reflect uh, public works, engineering, and debt service. Stormwater CIP is um, 11. Point, or excuse me, 13.1 million, with the majority of that work being based on. Um, flood reduction efforts and stream rehabilitation. Yes. You say no rate increase on stormwater? Correct. Don't we have an ordinance number, item number nine 
that have a, a, a rate increase? That would be suspending the rate increase. Initially, there was a five-year rate increase proposed in 2016-2017. Um, City Council, we have suspended the fifth and final year, and so Council has to take an actual action to suspend that rate. So that's suspending it suspending rather than it. adding it yes. on. Right. So gotcha. the fifth, the fifth of the fifth year of that five-year program has been suspended um, in, until a determination that those rate adjustments are necessary. Thank you. Yes, sir. Moving on to the parking fund budget, the total parking fund budget is eleven point four operating budget and one point nine in capital improvement program. The uh, parking fund budget uh, revenues make up ten point two million. Um, transfers in is 1.2, and most of that transfer in is from uh, use of fund balance of $1 million toward, that will be applied towards the CIP, or Capital Improvement Program. Um, revenues are a little more aggressive um, projected than what we have been, of course, as we're seeing more folks come back and utilize our parking system and visit downtown and visit our, um, our, our city. So our parking garages and parking activities are obviously much more active um, than in most recent years. Um, Interest does count for a portion of the revenue streams, and of course, as mentioned, we're using one million in um, continued funding from our fund balance. Expenditure-wise, the parking fund uh, departments total 5.5 of that total budget. Um, our parking fund uh, supports, of course, the operations of the parking system to include our monthly parkers as well as our um, parking meters and our parking decks and parking lots. Um, capital improvement of 1.9 and debt service of 3 million on existing uh, um, debt from prior capital improvement programs. It does include a transfer to the general fund of 500,000. Uh, the budget, the focus of this, uh, the parking fund budget is continuing to uh, focus on effective and innovative tools as we've described city council in recent presentations um, with our um, improvement operations and customer service in progress. And of course, a parking study system is, is complete and review and recommendations was under, will be underway. The parking CIP, uh, our capital improvement program of 1.9 million is focusing on uh, five different parking decks throughout the city. Um, and will serve to help um, address capital or um, urgent capital needs of our parking facilities. Moving on to special revenues, um, this includes our hospitality tax of 14.7 million, accommodations tax of 5 million, tourism development fee of 4 million, and liquor permit rebate of 2.1. The hospitality tax budget is 14.7. This um, includes revenues of 14.7 million. Um, this is an increase in the revenue collections of 2.8 or 6% over the current year. Of course, that's in line with actual collections. It does reflect the use of fund balance of 1.2. The current budget is actually a $4 million use of fund balance. So it shows a net reduction in the overall budget, but in, in essence, revenue-wise, it is an increase. It's just that there's less use of fund balance. Expenditure-wise, um, City Council has already made an allocation or uh, directed an allocation of $3.1 million towards the Hospitality Tax Committee. Those recommendations will be coming to you in, um, later this month for consider City Council consideration. The proposed budget includes an allocation of $2.2 million that has not yet been allocated and pending for um, uh, line name agencies or any other council um, directed allocations. Again, those will be coming uh, later in this month. Transfer to the general fund is at $4 million. That's based on the current year. Um, part of those allocations are helping to support the efforts for beautification. Debt service is at $2.5 million based on our existing debt service schedule. The proposed budget also includes several initiatives um, as, as um, addressed by city council. A public art initiative in our neighborhoods of 100000 City marketing and promotion are telling of our story for 385000 That's just a portion of that total funding. Um, there's other funding. Um, in some of the other funds. Expansion of the clean and safe to the Elmwood Corridor. Uh, Roadway bollards in our um, various entertainment and hospitality districts will be a public safety feature added to our um, roadways. And then capital investments in various parks of 1,059,000. Accommodations tax is at $5 million. That is a, a, a um, 
fairly aggressive increase over what we actually see in terms of collection. The majority of that is coming from a use of a um, fund balance based on the prior year fund balance as well as unallocated funds from the current year. Actual revenues are coming in at two, we're projecting at 2.9 million, which is an increase of about 11% of our current year budget and is in line with prior year actuals or current year actual collections. Um, the use of fund balance is um, 2.1 million. The expenditure was, um, the expenditure is based on the allocations as a, as a quarters to state law. As we've mentioned before, accommodations tax is much more prescriptive in terms of how we utilize our accommodations tax funds. 25,000 to the general fund, 5% for a general purpose, alloc which makes available allocation of 227,000. Funding towards a, a public restroom or public facilities initiative that's also been addressed by city council for 230,000. Debt service of 873, this is towards the debt that's been issued for the Park, Finley Park Rehabilitation Project. And then accommodations tax available allocation of $3.7 million. This has not been allocated, it's for, again, for future allocations based on city council's um, direction or discussions later this month. Uh, those are the remaining uh, funds as according to state law, 65% towards tourism uh, related expenses and of course 35% towards um, marketing and promotions. State law, again, is also very prescriptive about the use of a, of, a, of a committee structure in terms of how those funds and who those funds are allocated to. So you will have your committee recommendations available for you for um, city council consideration as well. Wrapping up and moving on into our tourism development fee, this is also a new budget and a new fund added to our, our program budget. Uh, it is a total budget of $4 million with three. It's based on 3% fee on imposed on hotels, motels, and other accommodations. This is referred to as the local accommodations tax. It is um, the allocations recommended or proposed for this budget it includes a $1 million towards the debt service of the Finley Park revitalization and construction project. Um, also utilizing funds of, of, um, for the city marketing initiative. And then um, what's not reflected on here is 2.7 million, 2,750,000 2, that is recommended for the Experience Columbia. Uh, ongoing funding that usually was funded from the, the source as well. Finally, the liquor uh, permit rebate. This also reflects a budget amount of 2.1 million. Again, the majority of that is from fund balance of 1.8 million. The actual revenues that are generated by this fund are around 350,000. The 1.8 million in fund balance is dedicated towards a um, capital improvement program or project at Owens Field. Um, and then of course, typically the use of these funds um, have been funded to help uh, support capital repairs um, such as the city's um, facilities with the historic Columbia Foundation and other historic structures as prescribed by state law. There are no allocations at this point that's also reserved for city council future use other than the 1.8. Wrapping up the special revenue, we have included um, uh, uh, these would actually be general capital projects, but they're funded with special revenue, so we're calling them out here. Uh, this includes um, 1.8 million, as mentioned, for Owens Field, um, Hampton Park playground equipment of 150,000, Greenview Park and Columbia Tennis Center. It's this is for $634,000. This is for park and tennis. It's not just for tennis facilities. Also, uh, Melrose Park, 275000 And then, of course, Ballard's at $1 million. The revenue streams are funded for these specific projects because most of the special revenues, tourism and parks and recreation are much more prescribed in terms of the use of these funds um, than there are other general purposes. So, of course, parks and our recreation functions make for good use of, this, of, these, of these resources. And that wraps up 425, actually 436 million and a little more than three minutes, Mayor. <laughs> yeah. We do have discussions also on our proposed ordinance changes since we are also uh, bringing forward to you today not only the budget public hearing ordinance but also the water and sewer ordinance as mentioned with the 5% rate adjustments and as uh, Councilman Duval has mentioned the ordinance that suspends the fifth year of the stormwater ordinance but also we've brought forward um, a couple of other um, function a couple of other events that are, are, are being proposed. Um, a parks and recreation has proposed uh, a few adjustments to their 
our various fees. Um, we have introduced and city council has endorsed um, the uh, inclusion of special event fees um, in, in um, the fire hydrant fees that was also mentioned previously, the budget does include uh, fire, fire hydrant fees at the rate of 10% adjustment. And then also an adjustment to uh, police false alarm funds. Um, we'll go through these real briefly. Parks and Recreation, um, as mentioned, they've made a few adjustments to their, um, because of the use and the active, the active nature of those parks, they've asked for a um, proposed fee to reserve those. Our other park picnic structures, are, of course, are first come, first served at no rate or no fee. Um, and then there are some um, moderate updates towards our um, support staff hourly rates. And then finally wrapping up with um, summer camp. Uh, um, th these would be rates that would be in effect for summer camp of 2024, not for the current year. So there's a few adjustments for those um, camps. Rates, those are in line with other what we see in other camps um, in our community. Moving on with uh, special events, we won't belabor. We've had this conversation with city council in terms of just covering different um, charges for special events. Of course, why, we, why are we proposing this? Um, these are um, the fact that most of the city services that are provided at various special events are at no different co at no cost to the event promoter. Of course, these are um, services that are provided um, by the city for special events. They are often these fees and rates are helping to to offset the cost of those services, um, and of course the um, the the purpose for doing this and in, in is is to be able to charge fees me mechanism for financing government provided goods and services. Just a little snapshot about the city's special events, looking at in terms of most of our special events come by way of requests from the police department, through the police department. In 2022, there were 321 special events that accounted towards 15,000 um, main hours from the police department. That does not count the other additional support hours provided by the different departments that help support these events. And there were 389 events that requested one-time alcohol beverage permits. Just year to date in 2023, and this is actually about a month old in terms of data, there have already been 77 events accounting for 3,300 main hours and 126 special events requiring one-time alcohol and beverage permits. And that's just to demonstrate part of the effort and um, workload that these events do have on our services. Types of events that we're referring to could be anything from block parties and concerts, um, races and parades. Not all of these events, of course, will be charged. This is just demonstrating what type of events there are being provided. Um, City Council has also expressed that neighborhoods would not be charged for use of certain services. Um, again, as certain services are being provided, um, This would be, of course, we do have some start, some events or some services that are charged, like rental of a park facility, police services, parade permits, um, and then, of course, fire prevention and the fire marshal. Types of services that are not charged currently um, include the pickup and delivery of barricades, the pickup and delivery of roll carts at special events, street sweeping, traffic control management, and services that are used, other city equipment and staff time. Again, the schedule that's on the screen is not intended to be legible from here, but of course it is available on the city's website and we'll make available um, as well for the public. And we'll promote these. These rates would go into effect January 1 of 2024. So there's different rates for city services and there's also rates for different permits um, that includes um, inclusion of a road closure fee that has currently not been in um, place as well as different rates for parade permits. Next we have the fire hydrant fee, um, the proposed um, fee adjustment of 10%. This would, incre this would increase a residential single unit that currently is $10 to $1 and the rates of course vary 10% um, across the different structures based on the type of customer um, receiving the, that the, the bill is charged. These revenues will generate about 1.5 million in revenues. Finally, the false alarm, police false alarm fee. Um, the, the fee structure is associated with the um, calls for service um, that, that the police department encounters for usually for faulty 
police alarms. These are false fire alarms. So the false um, of, of their total calls for service uh, at 165,000. Police alarms calls are r roughly 3%. Um, and of those, of their total calls for service, and of those total calls for service, 94% are for false alarms. So you can see that that obviously have a, has a big impact in terms of the number of calls for false alarms that the police department encounters on a regular basis. And with that, we have again wrapped up. First of all, um, uh, Ms. Wilson and city staff, thank y'all for for presenting a budget following what this council, and I wanna thank council because we've spent a lot of time working together and this is year two of committing to investing in Columbia. Um, our goal is to have a more vibrant community, a safe community, but investing in our services, our employees, providing them the technology, the tools to do their job more effectively and efficiently but also making sure that, that we're taking care of them as they take care of our community, but also investing in our parks, our infrastructure, uh, obviously beautification and appearance is very important to us, but we are the capital city and we're gonna continue to invest in our capital city so both our employees and our citizens receive the best service and the quality service that they deserve. And that's our number one goal. And I think we've achieved that with this budget. Uh, we continue to find creative ways. We're spending money differently. We're investing across and we're shortening our debt loads by, by trying different ways to finance things and look at how we get things done in, in a much, faster way, I guess is the best way to put it, but making sure that we don't skip on quality or efficiencies. And I just want to thank you all for what you presented. Thank you, Mayor. You followed our, our goals as a city, and, and I think we're achieving it. We're going to continue to invest. Uh, we're going to continue to go after every grant every ability to go after every funding opportunity, both at the state federal levels and outside of those, the private sector, there's a lot of money that's available through philanthropy, through arts grants and others. Uh, as we made that investment to have third parties help us go after that, we're gonna continue to do that. But with that, I just wanted to thank you all, all for what you, what you brought us. Uh, and I think this is exactly what we asked for. And uh, there's a little tugging and pulling here and there, but I think all our departments deserve the credit for bringing forth a budget that truly is a reflection of Columbia, South Carolina. Yes, sir. Mayor, we want to say thank you. I won't say thank you too early. We got to get our votes in, but we really appreciate the collaboration and um you know, genuine hard work that the staff put in from my standpoint, but also a council who is willing to, to listen and give good, clear direction to us. So we are very appreciative of the, of the hard work. I'm glad we're almost to the end. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good job. It has been a task over the last six months, and it possibly could have been longer, meeting every, seemingly every day. Uh, it's been a real true and pure exercise in putting together a budget that is reflective of this city. And we are thankful for you, Ms. Wilson, staff, Missy, Jeff, thank you for making sure that the purse strings are tightened. Thank you. Oh, I just... And loosened up. And loosened up. <laughs> thank you all so much. 
Ms. Thank, you. Thank you. So we'll go through these ordinances that are tied to our budget. The first being ordinance number 2023-063 to raise revenue and adopt the budget for the city of Columbia, South Carolina for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2024. We got a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And then I'm sorry, Mayor, that it is a public hearing. So at this point, it was opened. I deal with the presentation, but we should probably ask for any public comment. Would anyone like to speak on the subject of the budget? This is the first reading. So if you want to go read the 400 pages online and come back to us and we can get into some detail before the second reading. But one, I appreciate all the folks that are here because usually it's about five people here. Um, and so engagement is great. But this you do, if you do have some questions down the road, we will have a second reading so you can ask those questions before. Thank that you, Mayor. Too. Thank you. With that, Madam Clerk, I would read the roll, please. 